hurricane on Northumberland. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Tune Review uh, with myself and Alex for another night of uh, the Transfer Show. Um, lots to get through tonight, uh, lots of news coming out of the club, and it is, uh, well, to say it's heating up is an understatement when it comes to signings. Um, lots of uh, media attention on certain players. Uh, again, we're just having a look at the players that have been linked and have a look at their stats, etc., and see what they would bring to the club. Uh, and, of course, any announcements that come from the club will bring you straight away. Um, the big one today is, of course, Dan Ashworth. Um, Alex, fantastic appointment, that, isn't it? It's my favourite signing. Yeah. It's definitely my favourite signing because this doesn't just impact this window. This will impact uh, most of our signings, most of what happens in the youth setup, the direction. Um a lot of people argued that he's just coming in as a sporting director, but in previous roles, he's been in charge of multiple different things. Um, and he's going to be huge to who we are, like yeah. identity wise going forward. Who, you know, who are we going to be like in the next five years? What, what are we going to be? That's, that's all down to him. So it's super, super exciting. Massive, massive signing. Now he's, he's obviously been hired as sporting director, which, um, which is a very interesting job title. Um, he will be involved in in players coming in, obviously, and uh, he'll have had his uh, his nose to the ground while he's been on garden and leave. Obviously, I think he's, he knew this was inevitably going to happen, whether it be now or later on, once compensation with Brighton was agreed. So, I, I think with him coming in now, I think it's a very very good time for him to come in because I'm sure he will as soon as he starts his job. Eddie Howe will be in with him. Uh, they'll be getting together, discussing various things about where, where they want to take the club and where they want to take the team. Um, for me, it's just massively exciting because we're finally getting a, a guy who is is proven at what what job he does. You know, he's he's proven to bring in big players and good players as well, Alex. If you look at the players that he attracted to Brighton, um, you know, the likes of Basuma, Lamptey, etc. There's some really good players down there at Brighton, which he's had a huge part in. So for us, it, it can only be exciting. You're on mute, mate. Uh, looks like Alex has got a problem with his microphone there. He's gone on to mute. Uh, we'll get two minutes. We'll just look through some comments. Uh, Dominic says, even in all Hugo Ekitek's drop in form has resulted in a drop in price. Uh, well worth a punt. Eddie Howe has proved that players do respond to him and would allow Hugo to realise his full potential. Uh, Dan says, uh, good evening all. Uh, question here is your number one preferred first sight and personally mine is Ekitek. Uh Alex, about... Um, Dan Ashworth there, just talking about, you know, I mean, you heard what I said there, just a, yeah. it's massively exciting, isn't it? Just before you answer that, we've got a member, uh, Craig Johnson. Uh, thank you very much for being a member of the Toon Review. Welcome to the family, pal. Go on, Alex. Yeah, sorry, I lost my mouse there, so I couldn't, I couldn't unmute, just vanished. Um, yeah, he's going to be integral for, um, so, you know, we can all, we can all look at, who's good in the top leagues. We can look at stats. We can even look at lower leagues to a, to a degree. Uh, but somebody like Dan Ashworth and the kind of setup he's going to create, mm -hmm. he's going to be able to find these players, you know, before they're well-known. Um, when, when it's just down to attributes, style, system, he's going to be able to pick these, you know, pick these players up and identify and be part of that process of identity. And that's what Brighton have done so well. Um, they've been able to play money ball, um, extremely well. A lot of they've got a lot of high value players. A lot of their players are all worth thirty to fifty million right now. Kukurea, Lamptey, attackers, yeah. midfielders. They, they've got they look brilliant. They're in such a healthy position, ninth mm -hmm. in the league. Um, that's all what that was all part of how he built them up to this. Um, and it's and now he's going to be able to try and do this on a mm -hmm. much larger scale with more money involved and more of an international yeah. standard with European football. Um, so it's very exciting. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Jones, thank you for your four pound forty nine super chat. He says, "I bet Dan's garden looks the bollocks." Uh, yeah, he's he's been on garden leave for quite a while, so I would uh, I would imagine so. Uh, good evening, Julie. Uh, as usual, guys, uh, keep it respectful uh, in the chat and uh, hit that like button. Um, good evening, YT. Uh, Brian says, "Has the Dan Ashworth signing been confirmed by the club?" Yes, it has. Uh, they released a statement earlier on. Good evening, James. Good evening, uh, George, Brian, Tom. Uh, great news that Dan Ashworth has now been confirmed today. Um, 
what do you what do you think his main goal is going to be this summer? I mean, obviously transfers, yes. Um, but what else is is going to be part of that job? Do you think as sporting director? Mm, it it does depend on on certain aspects because obviously we've got the links with um, the owners and sponsorships. Um, so it depends who they're going to bring in. Obviously we've got the Saudi guy golf sitting on the board of directors. So it mm-hmm. depends who they're going to use in terms of for like marketing. And uh, obviously he's not going to be in marketing, but there are a lot of different elements to running a football club. And it just depends what he's going to be in charge of and how much mm. I would imagine it's going to be more um, youth setup and development, um, possibly a bit like tr- training facilities uh, in a very similar way to what Brighton is. It, um this is a step up for him because he was, there were people interested in him at, at, at bigger clubs pre sort of pre takeover. Um, so I I'd imagine they'd have to give him, I feel like the ball was in his court in terms of an employee market. He's going to have probably been saying, look, because we had a look at who, uh, and Milano, there was Ralph Ragnick. We looked at, there were a few people we looked at early doors in regards to like a sporting director, kind of where are we going to go? And they've gone Dan Ashworth. And I'd imagine he's probably said, look, if you want me, I'm going to want control. I'm going to want to do this, 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 this. So uh, I could be wrong, but I feel like he's probably dictated what he wants to be involved with. Uh, I'd imagine I could be wrong unless somebody's got any, maybe there's something I've missed. You know, if you guys think there is just whack it in the comments because it's a lot to take in because it's a huge role in a football club. It's massive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Craig Johnson, thank you for your ten pound super chat. Uh, thanks very much, mate. Uh, he says, if you haven't already, uh, think we should look at uh, David Rome at left back, uh, Noni Medeki at right wing, and Ibrahim Sangari at defensive midfield. Get on it, Alex. is <laughs> uh, okay. on the list, but the first two aren't. Yeah, we're only think... sort of talking about players that have been linked with us um, and, and sort of showing what we can do. So, uh, seeing if we what they would be like if they came to Newcastle United. Uh, good evening, Ken. Uh, Bradley Big Toast says, uh, having a love of this club. I'll be getting the cans in tonight. Uh, watch you guys after work. Enjoy the show, lads and lasses. Alex already has. Uh, Moxie, good evening, guy. Good evening to you. Um, Jade, thank you very much for your £2.22. Uh, hashtag 22. Um, do you know what hashtag 22 means, Alex? Is it a player? Is it a, is it, is, is, is it a, is it one of the Spanish I would imagine guys? It's somebody's number. Is that, is, is that Isco's current number in the squad or maybe Fabian sure. Ruiz or somebody? 22 is, I thought Lodi was 12. 22 is, could be, could mm. be. Uh, YT says, evening guys, uh, left back Abner Vinicius, uh, from the same club as uh, where Bruno got started. Uh, worth a look. Uh, young 22-year-old workhorse can cross a ball as well. Scores goals young and hungry. Uh, P. Lockie says, biggest transfer rumour, Harrods coming to Gateshead. Uh, which footballer's wife will not want to come to the two now? I did hear that earlier on, actually. I'm uh, I'm not sure what to make of that. Uh, we need to sign players with the same mentality as Trippier and Bruno, players who are here for the project. Yeah, it's um, his go shirt number. I thought it was. All Just right, checking. there you go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, that intro is amazing, says Michael. Thank you very much. Uh, evening, Paul and Alex. Uh, Will says, love the intro. Uh, Minamino, Oxley, Chamberlain, Alex? Um, Minamino, uh, Minamino, probably not. Oxley, Chamberlain's been mentioned a few Minamino times. Now? I mean, depends I on his age. That, he understands the think... system we like. Is he, he's always 27. I don't think he's that. Uh, uh, I don't he's not that old. I thought he was a lot younger than that. Not at 27. Probably not. I'd probably yeah. want to go in a fresh direction. I agree. New players. Yeah. 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 Uh, Ian Toon Trader says, Evening, Paul and Alex. Great day today with Dan Ashworth and us getting our signed Toon Top by the whole team. Yes. Uh, more to come on that, by the way. We are going to be um, promoting uh, Ian's charity. Uh, we're going to get them on the show uh, probably later on this week. Um, there will be uh, some some raffle tickets available, I believe, to win some shirts, to raise some more money for them uh, for opening their charity shop in Eldon Square. But we'll we'll bring you more on that. We'll get them on the show to explain a bit more um, and hopefully get you guys involved in that and helping them achieve uh, a fantastic charity and, and getting the shop open. So more to come on that during the week. Uh, good evening, George. Uh, evening, Terry. Um, which signing would you be the most chuffed with? Uh, well, 
It depends, really. There's the names that are being linked. It could be any bugger at the minute. Daniel Brown, thank you for your five pound super chat, mate. Uh, really kind. He says, Fantastic news on Dan Ashworth. Congratulations on hitting 11k the other night, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, certainly onwards and upwards. Um, Haller and Farrah in the hoose, uh, says Bagpuss. Uh, good evening, Brian. Uh, he says, good evening, Paul and Alex. Great to see we now have a director of football. Hopefully, players will start to follow. Um, I have a feeling, though, Alex, it'll be a, it'll be the sponsor that will come first before any players. Um, yeah, there's. I don't really know anything about the rules to that. There's, there's reports that there's still another month in play, and then there's reports saying that they're trying to sort out uh, getting that sort of just knocked off so they can start it sooner rather than later. Um, obviously, Castore posted on the Instagram today about kits coming soon. So obviously, it depends on the interpretation of the word soon. Um, stuff's moving. It, it will be soon-ish. We, you know, whether well, it's... we said last night, it's got to be so simply because of the, the replica shirts. They're not going to wait too long before releasing the shirts because they have to, um, you know, it, it, it get the... Get the shirts on fans' backs before you know the season starts, etc. So I, I I can't see it being too long. Well, they don't want to be signing players and big big profile players, you know, without the shirts done. Because if yeah. we do have like a massive superstar star signing, this will be looked back on for years to come across the national media. Um, so they would probably want the shirts to kind of be done. I would yep. imagine you don't want sort of half-baked tops when you're getting your star players Definitely. through the door. Uh, Dan says, Stato, can you not have a wander around Warsaw and tell Lewandowski to have a couple of years over at the Toon? Oh, I wish. <laughs> I might go and watch them on um, uh, Wednesday, uh, yep. playing against Wales, it, literally in my city. So I might go and sort of tick out and go and watch. Yeah, it's, it, it's a Nations Dom League game, up. but I think Wales will be treating that as a build-up to their... Um, well, it's the final of the playoffs. Whoever they, wow. whoever wins out of Scotland or Ukraine, I'd be interested to play if Wales Dummett's on Sunday. There. If Dummett's there, yeah. Maybe I see uh, Wolves play. F1, thank you for your two pound super chat. Uh, Newcastle is soon where they belong. Ninety seven or four at the UEFA Champions League. Hopefully, you're right, mate. Uh, Carl's are so glad this is on. The wife has just put Britain's Got Talent on. Uh, might have to jump out the high window. Oh dear. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad we can fill your night. Greetings from Norway. Uh, Anne says, good evening, Paul and Alex. Here we go. I'm so excited now. Um, Todd, good afternoon. I think it's afternoon over in America yet behind us. Um, the thing that Dan Ashworth brings, it, it, it's another sort of uh, injection of adrenaline for us fans, isn't it? It, it just, it, the, good, the good news keeps on rolling kind of thing. And, and that's what we want throughout the summer. Yeah, well, it, it takes a lot of pressure off different parts of the club and it takes pressure off us as fans as well because all we get all the time is, oh, well, your owners don't know about football and they're trying to run day-to-day -day operations and involved in yep. this, that and the other. Uh, and now we've got somebody in place. So mm -hmm. it takes the pressure off the club. We can start the ball rolling in that in that aspect and it takes the pressure off fans as well because we, you know, we can say, well, Dan Ashworth's doing it, so it's fine. Yeah. And he has the proven record. You know, the media... Love him. So it's funny, you know, they, 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 if they're trying to be consistent with their opinions, they've got to be nice yeah. to him now in theory, haven't they? They can't just yeah. suddenly turn on him yeah. because it's us. Exactly. Uh, Craig says, uh, every month I have to renew my membership. It cancels every month. Anyone know why? I don't, Craig. Uh, some people have a, an ongoing membership. Yeah, my uh, auto renews. Some people. I, I don't know why that is. I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's something. It's, it's YouTube's issue. Uh, I don't know why that is. Some people's auto renews. Some people's don't. Uh, it, it's... It's strange. Um, Guy, good evening. Hope you're well, mate. Uh, good evening, the dynamic duo. Good evening, Andrew. Kath says, great news about Dan Ashworth. It uh, would have been awful if we'd had to wait till November. Uh, absolutely. Uh, good evening, uh, Jeremy. Uh, ah, Stu, good evening. I've been trying to contact you. Um, I did put out on YouTube earlier on and across the socials. Uh, from last night, uh, when we said we were going to give away a mug, we actually decided to go with two. Uh, Susan made the draw earlier on this afternoon and uh, you won one of the mugs, Stu. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, Chippers was the other winner. Uh, but what I need you to do, Stu, is to uh, email me your address so we can get that uh, sent straight out to you, mate, because uh, we've obviously these are the demo mugs that we got when we got originally got in touch with the provider. Uh, they sent us some um, some out. So you, you can have, uh, you've won one, basically. So uh, 
send your address. Uh, it's just uh, the email address is at the bottom of the description of the video, mate. Uh, pd.toonreview at uh, gmail.com. It's not difficult, but uh, drop us an email and uh, we'll get that in the post for you. Um, for the first time in ages, I cannot wait for the season to start. Uh, Dean says, has Ashworth been confirmed? Just as some bloke on Twitter said it will be uh, June the 2nd alongside a new sponsor. Look, it is. It's it's June. It, it's um, It's been announced by Newcastle. They let out um, a, a confirmation, tweet the day, they made a statement, so away we go. Uh, Alex, when is the beard coming off for a 10K? <laughs> They're not forgetting. Uh, regardless of who we bring in, what a sign in Dan Ashworth is, the amount of strings he'll be able to pull and where he could get us is very exciting. Uh, I think Bruno is such a good player. He was 100% worth joining Newcastle United, says Liam. Absolutely. Uh, I find it strange how Tyrone Mings is worth the same as Diego Carlos. English and younger, I'm guessing, still bonkers, though. Uh, English and a lot worse, to be honest. I, I don't want Tyrone Mings. But we'll see. Uh, Keith says it's 3 a.m. here in Singapore. Not sure to say good evening or morning to you guys. Well, uh, good morning to you, Keith. Uh, Dan the Man could be our best signing this summer. Uh, pretty much agrees with what you said before, Alex. Uh, hi, Paul and Alex. Hope you're both well. What do you think of Calvin Phillips? I don't think he'll be coming now. Leeds to stay in the Premier League. Yeah, I think he is a good Leeds midfielder, and I guess we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a bit sad, really, but you know what it is. It's 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 just. Uh, Del says, even Paul and Alex, firstly, congratulations with 11K. I'm sure he'll go much further. Uh, do you think the opening date of the transfer window on June the 10th? Or in USA money, six pound ten. A coincidence. <laughs> oh, God! Yeah. It is. I told you it's it's proper conspiracy today. It's all know, Da Vinci Code stuff. Yeah, it is. Uh, right, who's first on the list? It is uh, Amin Aguri. It is indeed. So people people mentioned him yesterday. Um, his name floated around a little bit last month, but I didn't really see any proper links. Um, and then he's it's gone mental today as well with links to him. So mm. I don't know how much of it is true or not true, but we've never looked at him properly. So we'll have a look at him. Um, could be wrong, could be right. Who knows? Um, so he plays for Nice um, in France. Yeah. He is French born. He is only 22. So good age. Kind of the kind of thing we're looking for at the moment. Um, not small either. Just, just shy of five foot eleven at 160 pounds, so he's what shy of 12 stone. Ten goals, nine assists. Uh, slightly underperformed his uh, expect, expected goals, mm-hmm. but overperformed his expected assists. Good contributions, very good contributions. Um, considering as, as a, just a general forward uh, and the output we've been getting from Murphy, Miggy, and Fraser, if we got somebody in who could put half those numbers up in a sort of a winger position, then yeah, we're laughing. Um, we're getting sort of West Ham winger numbers from people. So doesn't mean he can do that necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, so he is a right footed uh, inverted winger plays on the left generally, but there's more to it. I'll get to that. He's been in two team of the weeks. Um, he's very involved in the football uh, kind of, kind of when we were talking about Brennan Johnson yesterday, Barely yep. touching the ball and just being a uh, instinctive, getting you know this guy's the opposite. He likes to feel his way around the ball. He's involved in the duels, in the build up, in the tackles, in the flicks. Very very involved. Um, it does seem like he's a lot better uh, when he plays up front. They play a four four two or sometimes a wonky four four two. When he's played out on the left wing or left mid, he's he's okay, but his better performances, higher stat performances, his goals, assists tend to come when he's playing up front, either on the left or the right. Um, so uh, they have uh, Andy Delort, who is very, very good, and Kasper Dolberg, who some people might know. Um, and and Guidi is doing better when one of them are missing and he gets to go up front. He's doing a lot, a lot more. Uh, it's not a flash in the pan. Last season, 19 goal contributions. This season, 19 goal contributions. He's done it two years on the trot which mm-hmm. is very nice from a 22-year-old. So he's got some pedigree. Uh, nice are 51.5% possession, fairly dominant, finished fifth in league earn. Um Not bad at all. They didn't score very much, though. They were the joint ninth in the league for goals, scored 52. They actually scored the same as Bordeaux, who finished dead bottom, uh, but Bordeaux just conceded wow. 91 
in a, in a 38 game season they conceded 91 That's mad. I, I haven't looked at it because I was prepping for the show, but I am going to go and have a look at what the hell happened to Bordeaux. I don't know how you can see nearly 100 goals. That's madness. Mm. Um, but he looks very, very interesting. But he looks he looks better further up. Um, my research is limited. I've watched... I haven't even been able to watch a full 90 minutes of him. I've watched about half an hour of a, of a live game, highlights and, and done some digging. So you've got to take what, what I'm saying with a pinch of salt. Um but seems like he's better further forward. He's a good age. Yep. Scores the goals, gets the assists, a uh, bit of flair, fits the system. He does kind of tend to play where Maxi wants to play, though. Always kind of left-sided. Even when he starts as a right-sided striker, his heat map seems to be all over the left anyway as well. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure where he would play or how he would be used if we are interested in him. But it is it is a it is a good shout. If we scroll down as well, that's why that's why. Just before you go into them, Alex, uh, we just had a five pound uh, super chat coming from uh, Toon Dave. Uh, thank you very much, mate. Uh, he says, "Do you think Dan uh, will raid his old club, Lewis Dunk? Anyone so happy we have him in the sporting director to guide the club? Uh, we'll have to see on that one." Uh, and Jade says, "Alex, I'm disappointed you had to Google that. Uh, obviously, Isco's number, but uh, there you go. Right, go on, mate." Um, yeah, well, it's what I was saying before. So his stat profile is broken down into sort of striker and mid winger because he, he kind of plays a bit of everything. Uh, so it doesn't look as impressive when you swap him to winger. Um, but he is he is tidy, very, very tidy. He's fairly energetic to, to a level. Dribbly, carries, passes, you know, one of these players that's always trying to get forward, um, you know, get, get the ball in the right direction. No, no messing about. Um, again, four, four um, shot creating actions per 90 is always lovely. So that's when, you know, he's contributing to getting a teammate to have a shot, um, which is brilliant. We want we want more shots. Uh, it means more goals as people can finish their dinner. So um, similarities are a bit funny, a bit confused by this. But again, I've not really seen him play much. So it's a very mishmash of, you know, because to me, I feel like Alvaro Morata and Memphis Depay play differently. Apparently not, according to their stats, but it's a very, very weird um, collection of, of players here and who he's similar to. So I'm I'm un- undecided, but, well, I say undecided. From what I can see at the moment, great. Yeah, looks brilliant. Depends on the price. Um, but I've not really seen enough to give a proper decision on my end. But it's really exciting. Um, cool to see that we've been linked a bit more with him as well. So we'll see if it happens. Um, there's been a lot of chatter around Nice and Marseille and Toulon and flights and I don't know what's true and what's not true. I've got no idea. So and he is obviously down that end of France, down at the bottom. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see what happens. Fair enough. It's, I mean it, it, look I I haven't seen too many links with him. Um it, it, you know it's just for me I'm not sure. To be honest, um, I've added him purely because he people mentioned him last night, and he got linked again today by several sources. So I thought, well, we we we've got to talk about him because it just its name just kept coming up. So it was worth just having a look at. Um, not sure how likely, but we we do seem to be fishing in that market. There's been a lot of links with sort of Rem, Nice, Dad Rene. You know, we, we are having and an Lon from yesterday. There's there's a lot of yeah. them sort of cropping up. So. It's no surprise that we're probably having a look at the markets. It's just which ones are true and not true. We don't know. Um, but I That's like it. We'll see. Um, Moxie, thank you for your three ninety nine super chat. He says, I can't wait to see what War Dan will do for us. I think everyone's uh, excited about what War Dan will do for us, to be honest. He's uh, quality uh, and he's, he's proven as well. Um, he's got a good background and he's well respected in the football world, which is what it's all about. Tim says, even lads and lasses, it'll be interesting to see who was our first summer signing. Uh, if we start big, uh, then wow. Uh, Wolves F1 says, Tune Review Host uh, is one of the most entertainment of any of these 100 plus EBL streams by any clubs. Thanks very much. Um, Paul says, uh, would prefer the shirts sooner. Uh, all the old kit is now off the club shop. Uh, website, uh, so can't be long. Release them early and sell a load of shirts. It makes sense. Uh, well, I- I'll tell you what, the green and white ones, I think, are going to go off the shelves quite quickly. Uh, you've got more on uh, Mr. Goody. 
Yeah, I'll just swap to his sofa score because it provides a few different things to look at. And I, I hadn't actually written that down. That's quite terrifying. Play a value of 50 million euros. Oh, that's a, wow, wow. That's a that, whack. That, that um, is steep, man. Um, heat map is, as I said, d- 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 it doesn't matter where he plays. Uh, left midfield, left wing striker. He does also play right-sided striker. All that heat map is very maxi kind of area. Um, mm. And ratings are pretty solid. Um I think they beat PSG as well, like last month or two months ago. They beat PSG. They're not. They're not a bad team. They're not a bad team at all. They're one of the best defensive teams in the league. I'm pretty sure. With yeah, the, yeah. I think they're 36 goals conceded, which is joint first with PSG. But we're not linked with any of the defenders. <laughs> so, eh, funny one. Um, but they're a good, they're a good team. He plays in a good team. He's got a lot of good names around him. Um, consistent performer at a young age, and he's done it for two seasons on the trot. Definitely an interesting shout. Just a, a bit pricey, especially when that's kind of near the price we were looking at Diaby as well. Um, hmm. Funny Fair one. Enough. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the price tag that puts me off now. I mean, close to 50 million euros. That's wow. I mean, yeah, they're not always right, though. It depends on. It depends on a lot. That's just a random website. It depends on on promises, on what the, whether the player wants to go, what the yep. direction of the coach is. You know that that could fluctuate 10, 20 million on based on Absolutely. different things. So it still is a good whack, though. Uh, Keith says, even and Paul and Alex seen a few posts on Twitter. Uh, Saudi Airlines will be Newcastle United's new shirt sponsor. Uh, not sure if it's bullshit. Uh, you know what? We'll find out when they announce it, mate. It's uh, it's just. It's it's pointless speculating because uh, we'll know uh, very very soon. To be honest, uh, very very soon. Uh, Foxy says Ashworth will be our best signing of this decade. Uh, changes the whole mentality of our club now. Positive steps forward. Uh, good evening, Steph. Hope you're well. Um, Stu's very happy about his mug. Uh, any updates on Matt Target? Says for hard nothing at all. And listen, it's gone off the radar. And I'll tell you something now. It's it's possible that he's not. You know. Lottie seems to be picking up pace, Alex, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, Twitter Lee, went th- mad this afternoon, yeah, didn't did. it, Lodi? Keith Lee, thank you for your... What's SGD? SGD? Five SGD? I'm not sure. Uh, Keith, let me know what uh, what that is. Uh, Guri is a good, uh, is good uh, but he's not playing a main striker. Uh, more like false nine or inside uh, forward linking midfield and attack. Um, yeah, it seems like that with from the stats, and it seems like the um, what was his name, Andy De, Delort, seems to be the main man, or Dolberg yeah. if he's playing, um, and then if they're both playing, uh, Guidi goes to left mid. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. He's more of a knit the play to the striker kind of guy, as opposed to the striker. Yeah. Uh, Jim, good afternoon from the Music City Magpies Tsunami Nashville. Uh, good afternoon to you in Nashville. Uh, since Ashworth has come in, which Brighton players would you want him to sign? Uh, Basuma, Lamptey, um, Lewis Dunk, uh, quite a few, <laughs> but I doubt he will. But uh, hey, you never know. You never know. Uh, evening, guys. What changes will you will we see inside St James's? New seats, finally a decent scoreboard screen you can actually see. Yeah, I do think they need another scoreboard up. I think the one where they've got, I mean, obviously, if you're sitting in the East Stand, you can't bloody see it. Um, but they'll have lots of plans. I'm and sure they'll upgrade the, the seats and everything where eventually. That nearly fell off, didn't it, a few years back? Yeah, exactly. Well, he never bothered with it, did he? Uh, but there you go. Uh, Ian says, thank you for the invite on. And you helped to get our charity over the line, Paul. Uh, me and Ricky, are you really looking forward to coming on with you and all getting you over to our channel as well? Definitely. Um, What's happened to Aaron Hickey links? Uh, Arsenal looked like they hijacked it, uh, but gone quiet again. Uh, I think it would be a great backup if uh, Lodi signed. I mean, uh, I, I've I've wanted to look at him like three times. And hmm. whenever the show comes around, the links go dead and we get linked with other left backs and we've not had a proper look at him. Um, he's on the list again, but it, de- it just depends. Because there's, um, there's so many players out there and we've only got limited time and limited shows, so we can't talk about everybody, unfortunately. And it, it's a case of trying to weigh up likeliness and fit and fun and price all at the same time for a show. Um, and Hickey, maybe, but there's, there doesn't seem to be as much chatter around him as there is Target and Lodi. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, Carl says, considering the new owners know nothing about football, they did well in January. 
Indeed. So I think what it's now like, we've got a, a sports director in. Uh, right. Next is uh, Hugo Ekiteki. Ekiteki! Wait, he's, he's got to go back on the list. He's got to go back on the list. Um, it's picking up pace, isn't it? I mean, he has been mentioned numerous times. And, of course, uh, is it Rimi plays for? Uh, they've stated that he can leave this summer. So he is available. Yeah. Um, we Obviously, we returned to look at Botman the other day. Um, and we haven't returned to have a look at Akatike. So it's it's worth it because he's the, the links are picking up speed again from various sources and he, he kind of fits what we want the interest is very well publicized and known about um it was even rumored that man united were interesting this evening as interested in him this evening as well so yeah. we, we'll see um so he got an injury he didn't play he, he missed he missed a while in the second half of the season um I, I mentioned on twitter that i didn't think he had a very good second half of the season and a couple of journalists disagreed with me um, and at the time, I, I kind of went, yeah, fair enough, because of his injury. But upon doing more digging again, I, I like him. I 100% mm -hmm. think we should buy him. Six foot two, not even 20 years old yet. 100% amazing. Um, but I think people are slightly... I, I'm talking about specifically how he performed in the second half of the season. I don't think he's as impressive as people are saying. He scored yeah. a missed penalty rebound. Um, he scored from a back pass and he scored from a massive deflection, and he got a red card in January. So there are a few things people are leaving out, and I'm trying to give a fair assessment. Yes, he's incredible. Um, the best way to describe him, so I've watched a lot of a lot of him. I have watched four or five full 90 minutes of this kid um, to, to really try and know what the hell I'm talking about, because it does seem more likely with this guy. Yeah. Um, he reminds me of Willock, like a taller Willock, but a bit more flair. That's the best way I can describe him. You know, when Willock comes in, comes uh, comes on in as uh, if I can get my words together, when he comes on as a sub with sort of twenty to thirty minutes remaining, and he's got legs and he does those runs. That's how Ekitike plays every match. He picks uh, the ball up. He's got a bit of flair. He drives it, but he's a bit taller. He wins a few more duels. He wins his aerials, um, and he's he's got a bit of pizzazz as well. And he scores goals. Um, he does try to pass as well. There's a lot of examples where he's in and around the box. And if he doesn't think he's got a shot on, he does look. He does pass it side sideways to try and get other shots on. He involves other people. Mm. Um, it seems like they they have quite a fluid attack when they're trying to bomb forward to the box, whether it's a two or three or a four. They all sort of rotate in with each other and try and do funny things. And and that's kind of how, how we, we're trying to go. Um, yeah. I think he's done okay. I don't think he's quite as bonkers in terms of performance as people are making out. I yeah. think it's the potential that people are more excited about. Yeah, the fact people that PSG were that, linked yeah. and yeah. he's meant to be the next on re and all of this. Um, I'd be very interested to see what Eddie Howe could do with him, working with working with him. Um, scroll down as well. Well, just to prove we talk about XG, he's got his non penalty XG is is less than five, and he scored ten. So he's been scoring a lot of goals that. He shouldn't have, i.e. deflections, passbacks. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a question of can he maintain this? Uh, probably because he looks like when he, he looks like he's got it when he's on the ball. Um, yeah. And then if I scroll down, people can have a look at that as well. Uh, progressive carries, dribbles. He just loves to be involved, and he's got a lot of energy. He's um, yeah, he just really does remind me of a of a French striker version of Willock, just two or three inches taller than Willock, but has flair and finishing more more so than he does. Um, so if he came in, he he would be back up to Wilson, wouldn't he? He, he wouldn't get ahead of Wilson at, at this present time. No, but it depends what Eddie Howe wants to do with him. It really. It, well, yeah, he might, he might not play. Him, he might not right. play him as an absolute striker. Yeah, he might put him out on the right yeah. and have a more of a floaty rotation thing. Um, it, it, he's young, he's raw. Maybe striker isn't his final position. We we never know. Um, he he could play in slightly different roles as, but he looks decent as a striker. Definitely, I think it's a hundred percent. Yes, we've got we've got to get him in. I mean, again, bit of a funny list of comparisons with with Josh King and Griezmann and Morata. Um, mm. 
I don't know how he plays like Morata. I don't understand that because I don't see Morata doing the kind of things I've seen in matches that Ekatiko does. Morata, I, I, I don't get the big thing about him. I, I never have. Um, I just think he, he needs about 20 chances to score goal, uh, one goal. I, I just don't get it. Um, I never but have. Th- this fits in with press from the front. You know, if we're going to try and move away from Miggy and Murphy and go in a different direction... Mm. Um, 18 pressure, pressures per 90 as, as a striker is, is very tidy. Well, and pe- before people say anything, this this statistical graph is comparing him to the top five men's leagues in Europe. So this yeah. is how he fares against all the big leagues, against professional men's football. Um, so this isn't just comparing him in, in France. This is this is against the best players in the world, in theory. So yeah, he's indeed. got very good stats considering. Very, very good stats. He looks he looks very tidy. Um, so, so Yeah, he's he's definitely... Uh, some. It is picking up pace, that. There's no doubt about it as well. Playing at the moment as well. He played last night in the under-20s France game. Yeah. Um, nil-nil against Panama. Uh, and he's playing again on Wednesday against Saudi Arabia on tw- under-20s as well. So... He's uh, he is playing football right now as well. He's not just chilling on holiday. Yeah. Uh, Bobby says Isco, no way. He's, he's done nothing for five years. Waste of money. Um, I don't agree with that. Uh, Mark says Asensio on a free from Madrid. Oh yes, please. Um, uh, Gary contract's says even... not expiring, is it? I don't think it is. Pretty even sure in Tune family. Uh, hi fellas, do you think Dan Ashworth will be able to get Bastos over the line? Oh, there's a name from the past. Baz Dost, dear me. Um, right, just to let you know, guys, uh, we've got a well a thousand watching at the minute, which is incredible. Again, thank you so much. Um, if you are new to the channel and you like what you see, please do hit that subscribe button uh, and uh, become a uh, become a part of the Tune Review family. And uh, you can also uh, hit that notification bell, which will then notify you of any uploads or recorded videos that we do. You can become a member if you wish. Uh, lots of members prize draws given out. Uh, we've got one coming up at the back end of this week uh, for this Newcastle shirt uh, that's been donated to me. Um, if it's not your size, frame it. Uh, it's really nice. It's the old, uh, it's got Solano 24 on the back. It's a, it's a lovely shirt and uh, it can be yours just for becoming a member. Um, and you can donate to the channel as uh some really generous folk have already done tonight. Hit the dollar sign at the bottom of the live comments and that'll take you through to that method. But please, if you're new, do hit that subscription uh, onwards and upwards for the channel. Thank you very much. Um, Foxy says, good, he's a nice player. Shouldn't be mentioned in a list for us, in my opinion. Uh, He scored one in his last 17 games. Um, The luxury brand Harrods will open a brand new store in the Metro Centre, complete with a champagne bar. It's been confirmed. Wow. Uh, Okay, uh, that's interesting. Um, uh, Malcolm says they are probably gearing up for the inevitable backlash from the media, etc., when they declare who our sponsor will be, uh, or maybe waiting for Premier League clearance. Uh, we should get Lodi and hijack Hickey off Arsenal. We'd sort, uh, we'd be sorted for a long time in that position. Uh, don't forget the tune added uh, tax, so that price is probably right. Uh, obviously talking about uh, Goody there, yes. I would imagine. Uh, I just realized that you guys hit 11k subs. Thank you, uh, Bandar. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Ian says, what Dan Ashworth has done for club and country is amazing. Uh, what heights uh, can he raise us with major investment in club infrastructure, youth development and player purchases? Excited to be a Toon fan. Absolutely. Use- oh, it's Singapore dollars. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I had no idea, but thank you. Um, Michael says, not long to wait on that shirt sponsor, to be honest, if Castoria's hint is anything to go by. Uh, White says, your thoughts on Jack Harrison? Well, we did Jack Harrison last night um, on the on the show. And uh, to be honest, yeah, I would t- we did. He was on the thumbnail and we definitely did Jack Harrison. Did we? Yes, we did. We did, Alex. Okay. I know, I know you're a busy man and stressed out and everything with the move, but uh, we did. Uh, Foxy says Mings and Carlos backline is mistakes galore for Villa would love to see it yeah uh, I saw uh, Nabil Fakir story today any traction in that or comical BS I mean he's on the list because of that traction uh, but we don't know if it's true traction so Mm. we'll have a look yeah 
Uh, Glenn says, I imagine the owners at some point will want a 100k stadium to get bigger gates, especially if we start getting regular Champions League thoughts. Glenn, uh, I don't think we're going anywhere soon. Uh, and 100,000 stadium. That, 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 yeah, that would uh, that would be ambitious, if I'm honest. Uh, I, that is going to be years down the line. Uh, I can't see us going, uh, well, moving anytime soon anyway. I think it'd be very, very strange. Um, Keith, thank you for becoming a member, mate. I think that's a renewal. Uh, but thank you for your continued support, buddy. Uh, I thought the transfer window opened the 2nd of June. Is that wrong? Uh, yeah, it's a 10th. Uh, Michael says, good evening, guys. I saw Liverpool are linked to Lewandowski. Do you think we could have got him? No. Uh, listen, forget players like that for now. We're, we're building and we're building well. Uh, so we just have to... Go with the flow. Trust in the people that are running the club and are bringing these players in. Uh, good evening, Peter. Hope you're well. Um, hand on heart, Alex. Who do you believe will be our first signer, says Tim? Oh, that's a horrible question. Um, it is, because it could be literally anybody. I, I, I'm, really, I'm really not sure, because everybody keeps U-turning on different signings all the time. We've been 90% done with a lot of people and it just keeps changing. Um, I think Ekitika and Lodi are both strong, um, but that's just gut feeling based on everything I've seen and what we need. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, we do love Target, but I, I, I yeah, I, I reckon Ekitika and um, Lodi will sign at some point. I don't know who's going to be first, but yeah. I'd be surprised if they don't. Absolutely. Uh, Paul Ryden, thank you very much for becoming a new member. Uh, again, if that's a renewal, thank you. If it's a new membership, thank you as well. Welcome to the family. Uh, Tangy says, is Cucurella from Brighton worth a look at? Uh, I've seen some rumours Man City are looking at him. Uh, I thought this guy was one of their best players for Brighton last season. Actually played well against us at St. James's, I remember that. He's a cracker. He was brilliant for Barcelona, but they let him go. Mm. Don't know why they let him go. Because they couldn't be bothered Cucurella. to develop him. Uh, that makes me think of that song Kukukaracha, and I, I, it, it, I said that last time when he was mentioned. Um, just, just no. <laughs> we'll change his name. Uh, Gary says good evening from uh, Roskilde in Denmark. Good evening, Gary. Uh, Eki Teki is a development player. Lots of the bench subs role. Um, Jimmy says journals disagreed. What the f do they know? Fake news everywhere. Absolutely, there is. Um, Jason Selleck, thank you for becoming a member or renewing. Thank you so much uh, for your continued support. Uh, Matthew would be very happy if we got Eki Teki. Um, I think everyone would be happy. If we, can you imagine me on the commentary with Eki Teki up front? I mean, it just, you know, it, 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 there's a wonder of quotes for Eki Teki. Um, Seattle Geordie, good evening, chaps. Uh, do you know where the away fans are going to be next season? Yes, they're going to be in East Stand Corner, I believe. Uh, where they used to be um, years ago, uh, which which is fair enough for me, because then I can't get things chucked down on me in the Leaser's end, which I bloody hate. Uh, Foxy says we should sign Eki Teki if we want our forward to be offside 10 times a game. Uh, poor discipline and we'll demand a big fee. More negatives than positives. So Foxy's not sure on Eki Teki. Um, Jason says I've watched him a lot too. Can't say I was massively impressed, to be honest. I play Wilson ahead of Eki Teki every time. If he's yeah, 19. I mean, Listen, it's a development player, isn't it? It's exactly. Not, we're not, you know. he's, he's young. Uh, he's young. And I think that that's what we're saying. You know, the fact that, you know, Eddie Howe uh, can work with him, can bring him on, can can make him a better player than he is already. Uh, and that would excite me that we're bringing in youth as well as experienced players. Um, he's also offside 0.5 times per 90. So I'm sorry, buddy, but that, that's not that's not right. He is offside once every two matches. So I don't I don't know what you've watched there unless you've watched him in well that includes the Cup de France games as well so no that's just yeah. not true yeah fair enough um, Keith says Miguel Amaron's release clause is sixty million pounds according to his agent but well, we're never going to get that for him in a million bloody Straight years Straight swap for Carrasco yeah <laughs> yeah uh, Foxy says I'm sure the people that are desperate for us to sign Eki Teki have just watched his YouTube highlights. Foxy's not a fan, clearly, of Eki Teki, uh, but again, it's it's personal preferences, it's it's opinions, and that's what we all have on on here. It's it's different opinions. Uh, good evening, Ginger Geordie. Hope you're well. 
Uh, Eki Teki can play on the right and cut in, but certainly cannot depend on him as a main striker for the new season. Uh, would weigh too much on that young shoulders. Exactly, Keith. And, and that's what we're saying. You know, bring him on. You know, just progress him. Uh, it's great being linked with top quality players and hot prospects. Uh, it's night and day from the dark, depressing Ashley era. No more bargain basement shite. Uh, and Trull says, with how just waiting to get the best out of Eki Teki, it might be great. Um, Michael says, I would still take uh, like us taking a chance on Gabriel Barbosa. Uh, we were linked in January, uh, but he'd be fairly cheap and score goals. I haven't heard his name for a long time, to be fair. Uh, that's gone very quiet. A lot of that January list has disappeared. I think that was a, I think it was a January list. Mm. That, and that's that. I think it was literally just a January list. A lot's changed since then. Um, you know, we gave up on a few people who were older or who, people who we were 50 50 on. So we'll see. Well, if I was to ask you, you know, people are talking about, you know, bringing strikers in, etc. Is somebody like, would Eki Teki, if he was the only striker we brought in, Alex, in the summer, would he excite you? Well, it would, it would excite me as a signing, but I wouldn't be satisfied with one striker. I feel like he would be brought in as a development striker, um, it depends on, on what the, it really does depend because we have so many positions we could put a superstar in. It depends where they want to do it. Obviously we're all thinking Shearer, number nine, St. James's park, buy a proper, proper striker, sell shirts, you know, that's what we're thinking. And it makes a lot of sense logically, but they might put, they might put their superstar in central midfield or out on the right wing and they might buy a development player up front and play Wilson. And I, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure that they could go in different directions. I would prefer them to get a proper, proper striker and then bring in a as a development striker, but you know, they know a lot better than I do. And they'll probably, it depends on what's available, what the prices are. We'll see. We'll see. I, I personally, I would prefer proper striker and a I would like to see two strikers in, um, which mean we would have four at the club if we let Gale go. So yeah. including Wood, of course. Oh God. We have to. Um, Stu says almost 1k watching. Well, there's over 1k watching now. Hit the like button, help the channel out. Thanks, Stu. Uh, Alan says nothing uh, can happen till June the 10th or possibly 1st of July for international deals. Uh, all now just speculation. Uh, don't mean to, uh, are just all the media links. Well, Alan, they can agree. They can sign the contracts and the contracts can start on the 10th yeah, of June. Yeah, Diego Carlos has signed yeah. a pre contract that starts on the 10th and he's, a, he's Brazilian, so he's definitely not. Unless he doesn't count as international because he's been in Spain for long enough, possibly. Not sure, but listen, they, they, they can, they can agree. So it, it's, uh, let's just not bother discussing that. We're just talking about players who we're going to get in and, and let's look forward to the summer. Um, Matthew says, Eki Teki, our first signing, I think, but it could be anyone. Um, Maggot says, uh, centre back Bremer, please. He's class. I, I haven't seen us link with him that much. I, no, he I is haven't a either. Cracking player, but I've just not. I've not seen anything at all, um, and I, I, I like I like us looking at fun players that would be fun signings. But there's so many links. I, I feel like it would be unfair to to look at Bremo when there's zero out there. But if there is something out there, please link me to it, show me, and I'll I'll, I'll have a look. But yeah. I haven't seen it. So uh, Michael says, uh, wonder when the target release clause expires, June the first. Uh, I don't. I honestly don't think he is now our first choice left back, guys, to, to sign. Uh, I believe it's Loddy. Um, and Aaron Hickey is getting a mention time after time as well. Uh, I haven't heard anything on Matt Target in the last few days. It's gone very, very quiet, Alex, and it seems like we're focusing our attention somewhere else. Yeah, I don't think they're going to go go in that direction. I think they're. They want to go a bit more flair, even though Target was very, very reliable and a cracking player and at peak age. I think they want to go in a different direction, which is fair enough. Um, they maybe want yeah. to go two, three years younger, more potential, a bit more flair going forward. Um, it, I mean, it's they're building for trophy pushes, aren't they? So, I mean, it makes sense. It does make sense. It's just emotionally it's hard because Target was so, so good. Um, yeah. And he loved he loved his time here, and we we enjoyed watching him, and it was it was brilliant. So, yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, Justin says, I heard Ashworth needs to be approved by the Premier League. Why is this? Well, it doesn't. It's done. He's Newcastle United have released a statement this afternoon, uh, welcoming him to the club. So it's all done. And the Premier League do not have a say on who Newcastle United take on as staff members. Uh, so don't worry about that. It's all done. Um, Let's just jump there. Bagpuss says, a few good players would transform the tune completely. Champions League for us next season, we will see. Um, Terry Gorman, thank you for your £5 super chat. Really kind, buddy. He says, by the way, guys, I've decided you are all worth uh, awards and support back on Family Myers. Uh, also, especially Mrs. Toon Review. Amazing, all of you. Thank you very much, Terry. Really appreciate that, buddy. Uh, Keith says, if Eki Techie joins, imagine the commentary saying Eki Techie, ASM, Bruno names. Quite a nightmare for them. Uh, yes, and for me as well. Um, and we have next, we have Fabian Ruiz Pena. Yeah, so this is a bit of a, not a super detailed look. This is more of a, today, everything's come out of Spain. Um, there's the situation with Barcelona not being able to sign contracts properly at the moment. They've got issues with their wage bill right now. Uh, Fabian Ruiz apparently is, is allowed to leave Napoli or wants to leave, or they're telling him he can leave as various reports. Um, Isco's obviously gone. Uh, there's also reports about Longley and Umtiti from, from Barcelona. So there's there's a ton of things happening in the Liga. So we'll, we'll, we'll start with, with Fabian Ruiz first, because um, it was the first thing I saw today about from, from Spain. Yeah. Six foot two, 11 stone, absolute magi- magician in midfield again. Um, peak age at 26. Played a lot of minutes this season, been very, very integral. Seven goals, four assists. Has got mm-hmm. pedigree, international level, Champions League, Europa League. Um, obviously, Napoli were were a bit, well, were a bit better a few years ago. They were title challenging and in Champions League consistently. They've dropped off a little bit, um, but still, he is the finished article if we wanted to buy somebody who's ready right now to be world class you'd pick him up and put him in the team mm-hmm. um and you can scroll down and just see what he would bring to our team in terms of you know professionalism passing quality on the ball um vision he's just you know he's one of about 10 spanish midfielders around that can just do this because it's just from that generation yep. um absolutely incredible not sure how much he would cost. Um, he's played at the highest level. Italy's a, a reasonably good league as well. He's been c- uh, competing against strong teams. They've been strong recently. Uh, there's no point in going super crazy on him, but he's a, he's apparently available. So I'm sure he will be on on the list for the club to be to be at least talked about, whether it's vaguely or or whether they are properly interested. We don't know. Um, left-footed as well, which is always nice to have have another option. Um, and yeah, I don't want to go too mental on him, so I can swap to another one unless you want to have a chat about Mister Mister mm-hmm. Ruiz. Uh, well, we'll just uh, we'll take a few more comments and then we'll move on. I mean, Ruiz, he looks a monster of a player. Actually, now if if we were were to get Ruiz, I would I certainly wouldn't be complaining. I think he looks like a quality player. Uh, but again, it's it's valuations. It's it's what. Um, yeah. You know, it's what they think he's worth, what we think he's worth. Um, you know, we know about, you know, Newcastle United tax and all that crap is still going to go on. So we just need to be... Um, yeah, I mean, if he's available for the right price, yeah. You know, if, if you if you had a friend who knows nothing about football says, can you can you find me a yeah. tall, strong, peak age, Spanish, tricky midfielder who's great at passing and stuff, you'd just, you'd just pull him out just as a ready-made player. Yeah. Um, Ticks all the boxes. I'd agree. Uh, I certainly wouldn't complain. Uh, this is a bit of a weird one. Uh, I Like Coffee says, I had a weird dream about me, Paul, and the panel last night. Apparently, we were in an enclosure, and someone sent a message on our radio telling us the T-Rex was in there with us, and then I woke up. Uh, stay off the cheese. Uh, I would recommend you stay off the cheese um, and you know, read a book, warm bath, warm milk or something. Lay off the cheese before you go to bed, or you'll end up with very strange dreams like that. Um, Billy says, uh, if Eki Teki is our only striker signing, uh, it could easily be another John Dahl Thomason situation, couldn't it? Yeah, and that's what we have to be careful of, uh, you know, because we know what John Dahl Thomason went on to do when he left Newcastle. Uh, he went on to have a fantastic career in Italy. Uh, so 
we have to be careful, uh, and I think it's very important. But I think now that Dan Ashworth is in, Alex, I think he will have a lot of thoughts about who he's going to bring in, who he's not going to bring in, and and who's who's good enough to fit in, basically. And also, he'll have conversations with Eddie because Eddie Howe will tell him how he wants the team to play and what kind of players will fit into that system because we've mentioned many, many times that it's all right, you know, sprouting these names out or, you know, the, the media speculation about certain players coming to the club. But if they don't fit into Eddie Howe's uh, way of playing and his style and buy into what he's doing, it's pretty pointless. And before you answer that, we've got a £20 uh, super chat from Geordie Metal. Uh, thank you very much, mate. Really kind. He says, striker and right side attack and mid must be our main targets. Um, yeah, go on, Alex. Um, yeah, so effectively, I think he's probably been doing work indirectly behind the scenes anyway. Mm -hmm. This will simply just be signing on the dotted line and allow him to directly interact and communicate and be in involved in day-to-day -day proceedings and see everything up close and have those proper conversations. Yeah. Um, and again, it'll mirror, he worked very closely with Graham Potter at Brighton, and I'm sure it will probably mirror that sort of situation, him being in contact with Eddie Howe and sort of choosing a shared direction and a vision of how they want to play. Fortunately for us, Eddie Howe's picked, picked a certain style and he has a direction, which, which is different to Graham Potter's, but they're both, they're both modern attacking aggressive. It's, def it's definitely fine. Um, and I agree with the comment as well. We definitely need the the right sided attacking midfielder as well. We do need yeah. somebody to come in and, and and play in front of Willock in that box to box because Willock, I feel like, just needs to develop. And we can't put everything on his shoulders next season. We need somebody to be his, you know, mentor in that in that role. Indeed, uh, Mike says. Uh, uh, just seen an article about how Anthony Martial will be regretting not signing for us. Uh, I doubt he would have fit into our team well anyway. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't get the fascination over people wanting to sign him. Um, I was never, uh, you know, caught, I was never sort of. Oh God, let's get him. You know what I mean? He didn't excite me enough. Um, but you know what it is. Again, I think our right hand side is is possibly. You know, we've got Maxi on the left. We know we have, and and I don't think he's going anywhere. I think uh, he's a big part of Eddie's plans. So for me, the right side needs to change. Um, you know, for all Ryan Fraser's done really, really well, you know, we're looking for that step beyond now, the step up from Ryan Fraser, the step up from Miggy. Um, uh, Miggy's not a right a right winger. He's, he's just not. It's not his position. Uh, so we definitely need to improve there. Uh, John Joe says, do you think we should try and sign Isco? Uh, he's a free agent. Uh, I think he would be amazing for us. Uh, your views on him? Well, uh, Alex is a big fan, it's fair to say. He was buzzing when his name cropped up the day. Uh, Jade, uh, you know, who uh, has been on the channel a few times, she is um, obviously said hashtag 22 earlier on in the show. She's a big fan. I'm a big fan. Some people won't be. Um, but listen, I, 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 I think he's quality. I, I really do. Um, and, and, and Alex does as well. Uh, Brandon says, apologies if this question has already been asked, but what's Dan Ashworth's background and why is this such a good signing? Love the show, lads and lasses. Uh, would you like to explain that one, Alex? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the most notable things are he was part of the the whole DNA project and the change to to the national team in English football from grassroots level all the way up through the youth the the youth levels under seventeens, eighteens, nineteens. Um, you know, we won the was it the under seventeens tournament we won? We won one of the one of the youth world cups. Um, and and his kind of his ideas are often praised as what led us to the recent success in our tournaments and a lot of the development of, of attackers and just, just looking a lot healthier in the England setup There's far more choices, you know, with the right backs we've got and the, the wingers, we've got a lot of talent in a lot of different areas. Mm. Um, and then beyond that, he went and worked with Brighton um, who are one of the lowest budgets in the premier league wage budgets and transfer spend. And they had to money ball their way. Um, and instead of, they, they tried to do it a very different way to, to other teams who just came up and, e and either went down with second season yeah. syndrome or they just recruited and, you know, they, they, they ignored all of that and they just went their direction. They tried to recruit well, recruit mm -hmm. unknown and recruit the right system with a progressive young manager who was going to play a, a good system. Um, 
and it started to pay off. Yeah. And, you know, they've got very, very good players, how we mentioned earlier on in the show, are worth a lot of money. Uh, and Brighton play good football and finish ninth. You know, they tick every single box. So they're such a healthy really? club in terms of their finances, their league position. Everything looks very good. So, yeah. and we, we've got, got Dan Ashworth and he, he did all of that. So, well, he's responsible for, for parts of it. So it's great yeah, for us. Absolutely. Um, Ross says, uh, I read the club statement earlier. As Shua said, it's about Ashworth deal was Premier League pen. The only reason I'm thinking it's pen- Premier League pending is because there's compensation involved between Brighton and Newcastle and the paperwork needs to be signed off by the Premier League. That's a, that's probably the reason why it's waiting for the Premier League um, because obviously I'm just thinking that there's compensation involved which which would need a, a Premier League uh, approval. Um, it's not to say that they will turn it down. There's, there's no reason to turn it down. It's the compensations agreed between the two clubs. Um, so I'm pretty positive that it will just be paperwork that needs to be cleared with uh, with those guys. Uh, Keith says, uh, Paul, I'm not sure if you remember, I followed you uh, when you had under 100 subs and you told me to get a pair of earbuds for £30 and I got an Amazon gift for 15 uh, I do remember that, Keith, funny enough. Uh, I've still got those earbuds. Um which is really strange, but uh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, God, I was trying to do anything to make a bit of money. Uh, Trill says, Jade, do you like Spanish players by any chance? She doesn't just like them. She loves them. Um, Rui is apparently £40 million, pounds, Alex. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. It depends on, on his uh, his contract length. I mean, have I got a have I got a tab open for transfer, Mark? We can actually check what his contract length is. Sure. Uh, 40 million seems like a you know everybody's going for that kind of money at the moment aren't they especially for a ready-made buy yeah uh yeah. so his contract expires june 2023 so there's only a year left uh current market value 55 million euros so 30 to 40 would make sense with a year left um if he wants to go or if they don't want him so probably get him cheaper than Cheaper than he should be depends on yeah. uh, competition for the signature. There will be a lot of play. A lot of people would want him. So, yeah, uh, I tell you what, Glenn's shopping lists: <laughs> Diaby, Egiteki, Botman, and Kunku, and Lewandowski. <laughs> hey, bring in them five. We've had a hell of a summer. Uh, Colin says Ashworth would have talked with the owners, and he knows how we need to get up the league. Please remember to hit those likes and consider subscribing if you're enjoying the show. Uh, indeed, thank you, Cesare. Uh, Lewandowski will want Champions League football. Uh, I think he will at this stage. Uh, we need Isco. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, good evening, Renier. Hope you're well. Uh, agreed, Rock will go to target not getting signed. Uh, yep, but what do they always say? Do not fall in love with loan signings. Never fall in love with loan signings because you just never know what's going to happen. I mean, look, look, for all we know, they might bring in Lodi and Matt Target. I don't see the, the point in doing that, but, uh, you know, they might. Um, but, listen, we don't know what my, what uh, Matt Target wants to do. There's been rumours that he wants to move down south uh, or that his partner's not wanting to be up here. She's wanting to be closer to her family. It could be any reason. Uh, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, Mike says, maybe you shouldn't sign Target and get someone else in. I still remember what happened after Willock's loan. Uh, a drop in quality, could Target suffer the same? Uh, no, because I'll tell you why. Um, we were told by various Arsenal fans when Willick did sign permanently that to, be, to to watch him very closely because he tends to drift in and out on a season. He'll come in and play really well for a few games. Then it'd be, he'll be missing for a few, especially the bigger games. And no doubt in my mind, it, it, that happened this season. Uh, so I don't think that would happen with Matt Target, to be honest. It, it, different Different player altogether. Uh, with all credit to Callum Wilson, who was amazing, Newcastle need two strikers. Wood isn't the top eight striker. Well, I'd agree with that for a start. Uh, he, he definitely isn't. Um, guys, I do apologize if I don't put any of your comments up on the screen. It's just they keep skipping on here. And I, I, there's uh, obviously with nearly 1,100 people watching, there's lots of comments coming in. Um, and I, I don't, I can't get back to them. So if it skips, it's, it's the software, it's not me. Uh, so I do apologise for that, but keep the chat going because it's chatting amongst yourselves as well as uh, as well as us as well. So thank you for all your comments. Um, do you think Lodi Diaby Paqueta? Then this will be enough till maybe January for a striker. No, I think I, mm. I tend to think no, we need a striker. If Alex. Wilson gets injured, then we're stuffed. Oh. Well, we're stuffed and stuck with Chris Wood. Um, I mean that that doesn't fill me with a lot of 
a lot of confidence, to be honest. Uh, Kieran says, if you both had to pick one player from all of the players we have been linked with, who would have you got? Uh, Paqueta for me. I'd love to see Paqueta in. I mean, we were technically we were linked with Mbappe, so I could just say Mbappe. It doesn't mean it's serious. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I I would like Nunez to be honest. I I'm still mm. I still have the the weird Geordie dream of of a new number nine because we've not had you know if we could have another number nine who was a record breaker, it, it just it's just it's just the fairy tale, isn't it? Um, yeah, absolutely. Somebody who, who who Shearer can sit there on match of the day and analyze and be like, oh, look at it. You know, it's just what we what everybody wants. Yeah. Um, so a, a, somebody like Nunez or maybe better. Hmm. Uh, Julie says, if Heineken are watching, nudge, nudge, Alex. Uh, Astral Chim says, Isco has not got the legs for the Premier League. Uh, Mick says, do we expect an interview with Dan? Could be a great watch. I would, uh, yeah, I mean, look, he'll be doing interviews when he comes to the club. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Isco was the best attacking midfielder in the world from 2016 to 2018 with Ronaldo and Benzema. Uh, those three were disgusting under Zidane. Uh, there were, uh, it was a, a dominant forward line. Uh, Michael says, think we need to get away from the thoughts that we need wingers. Uh, I feel Eddie Howe wants us playing with three forwards, one on the left, one centre forward and one right. Don't think we are looking for Keith Gillespie types. No, but... Yeah, he, still... he likes inverted wingers, doesn't he? So he likes Yeah, but they still in. need to have a, a sort of winger quality to them, don't they? Uh, you know, they, they still need to have that kind of spark to get, get around players. Uh, maybe do you not. Think... This would explain Lodi because maybe he wants to go overlaps. Possibly. Dare we say three centre backs, Alex? We no, we don't. No, <laughs> we don't, I don't have think we do either. I don't think <laughs> that's we, not anyhow. Really we'd have to sign. It's, oh. Well, it's not how he plays anyway, is it? To be fair, uh, it, it really no. isn't. I like be able to I like do it Tom because we're losing yeah. Fernandez, and um, yeah, I think my internet's going a bit funny. Sorry, we, we um, there's no way we could do it. We don't have enough centre backs. Hmm. We just don't. I like Coffee says I like a few go. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I like Thomas Muller. Can we get him? And will he fit in? Thomas Muller won't come. He's 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 too, he's too old now. Anyway, um, how old is he? About thirty-seven. He must be a canny age now, Thomas Muller. He's not that old, is he? I'm sure he must. Be. Uh, well, I don't know. He seems to be have been around for years and years and years. He is. My internet's gone through the floor. Uh, is uh, about to turn thirty-three, so he's not wow. that old. You I didn't get think two he was that years young. Out of him at the top level, still possibly more. And he's uh, eighteen <laughs> assists in the Bundesliga this season. Yeah, he's in it's a mental. very, very good side. Uh, Ryan says we got to break the bank for a strike and not spend forty million pound on potential. Uh, goals win you games, wins get you three points, etc. Jim says can't get over the want away players and feeling homesick. If you're in the UK, you can fly anywhere in an hour or two from Newcastle. Uh, in Ontario, it's a thirty-hour drive from one corner to the next. It is indeed, Jim, and I, I, I understand that. Yeah, uh, you've got a very good point there. Cheswick says Man City, the only club who has equal depth in their squad compared to their starting eleven. We'll need a strong youth system going by 10 years' time. Ashworth's importance can't be understated. Agreed. Uh, David says, I agree, Alex. A proper number nine would be epic. We'll never forget Shearer's arrival. Real football dreaming. Uh, I remember Shearer's signing as well. Uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, any good players among the championship teams that did not get promoted? Some players may want to play Premier League football and we can give them the chance. Um well, Brereton Diaz was one of them that I, I, I mentioned back in January, but um, I believe that Duncan Ferguson is about to be uh, announced as Blackburn Rovers manager. So I think Brereton Diaz might fancy playing under him next season. Um, who's next on the list? We have Nabil Fekir. Yeah, so another one uh, that was linked and was mentioned in the comments a couple, for a couple of shows. So... And he was he, he also got um, a few rumours today, so just a combination of all of those those things means we've we've just got to have a look at him and we'll we'll throw him in because we're looking at La Liga as well. Um, so he was meant to be coming to Liverpool and playing a big role in the Premier League as being one of the best midfielders, but then he failed his medical. They weren't happy with his knee, 
he went to Betis and he's still been absolutely incredible uh, in an attacking midfield role, can play out wide as well. Um, and it doesn't seem like his knee's given him much bother because he's played nearly 2,800 minutes this season and 600 of Europa League. So he's playing a lot. He's very involved. Six goals, eight assists. He's incredibly involved in play. Um He is about to turn 29 soon, so somebody we could possibly get three years out of. Um, Depends what we're trying to use him for. Is it Betis? Real Betis, yeah, in in La Liga in Spain. Um, So he's a left footer who plays kind of right midfield or right attacking midfield or right wing. He he likes to float over that side. It's kind of an inverted thing, which fits with what we want. Um, So it, it, it does fit. Not sure about the age because they do seem to be. I, I'm I'm really not sure the direction they're trying to go because we keep being linked with attacking midfielders and wingers who are 21, some are 24, some are 29. So I'm not kind of sure where they're going if they're looking at two. Maybe they're exploring multiple options. Um, but he still puts up the numbers. Um, definitely does well on the pitch. Yeah, passing, progressive passes, progressive carries. Even his dribbles, despite his age and his apparent knee issues, he's fine. His defensive contribution contribution is very decent at nearly 20 pressures per 90 as well. Mm. Um, and he would just be an... Yeah, he would he would slot straight in, a, in front looks, of Willock. Or he looks a beast. Right. He is an absolute tank. Um, interesting comparisons as well. We've got Mount on that list, which obviously everybody should know. Uh, mm. And he's got... It's weird because he's got comparisons to like floaty attacking midfielders yeah and then right wingers like Dembele and Zia who goes outside on the sides Neymar as well so mm. he is sort of a hybrid you know sort of playing where Paqueta plays but can play out wide as well he has got that inversion with the left foot um it fits it does fit it's um a very again I would probably go for him over uh, Fabian Ruiz. Maybe um, Jade wouldn't be too happy about that, but uh-huh. I think he just slightly, slightly different, but fits what we need as a team right now. Yeah, um, ticks enough of the boxes in terms of the, the work rate um, and the positions he can play and the left foot. It, it just works quite nicely. Mm. Give us a lot of head of. Um, he would either start ahead of Willock uh, in the midfield or he would go out on the right. I don't know what they would do with him, but it's an interesting shout. How likely it is, I have no idea. But his name's been thrown out a lot. So worth looking at. Yeah. And of course, you've got to remember that the agents will be spouting the, the names of these players out a lot as well uh, to try and drum up attention. Um, but it, it, it just depends on... Um, who pricks their ears up and thinks, oh, hang on, we'll have a look at him. Uh, Football Style says, uh, what about buying Richarlison from Everton? Uh, I can't stand Richarlison, if I'm honest. Uh, I don't think he does enough. Uh, I think he goes missing for parts of the season. Uh, I don't like his attitude on the pitch. Uh, I think he dives. He's a cheat. Um, And I I don't rate him at all, uh, to be quite honest. I think there's much, much better players that we can target rather than Richarlison. Um, Stiff Gate that says Richarlison, please God, no horrible attitude. Richarlison is shocking. Um, yeah, so not not a lot of people uh, liking Richarlison. Uh, Michael says, uh, Paul and Alex, we got to talk to Lewandowski at least. Uh, we got to start moving like a big club as our pockets are well deep. Well, we can talk to him, but he, he's not going to talk back. Oh, by the way, uh, our friend uh, Mr. Ginger Hoskins uh, on Peter's channel last night came out with the quote that Newcastle United are not the richest club in the world. Just putting it out there. Make of it what you will. Uh, Newcastle will be legendary, apparently. Uh, Lewandowski, 33, isn't interested in projects. He wants Ballon d'Or and UCL now. Uh, we have zero chance. Yeah, you know, he's... He, a little on, bit but... too old. He might have been interested if this was two years ago, but... Yeah, and we're playing it. in the Champions League and stuff. We, we have to be in Europe to uh, attract players of, of, of his quality at, at any age. Uh, Dominic says, Alex, I think they will look for experience and youth in all positions as we move forward. It makes sense. Uh, what are your thoughts on Seko for Farner? Oh, you'll have to go and watch yesterday's show because he exactly. was the last name on, on yesterday's show. 
I was just about to say that, but I thought I'll let you say that just in case you look at me thinking, did we? <laughs> uh, we need to sign uh, Hussein Awa. Uh, cut price this window. He's so underrated. I have never heard of him. Really? He Again, another one for, for Leon um, that was meant to be one of the best attacking midfielders in the world. And it's just gone mm. really quiet in the last year. Uh, he was rumoured to be going to Arsenal like in several windows and a bunch of different clubs. How the hell do you spell his name? There we go. Um, I mean, he's been all right this season. He's 30, 36 league one appearance, uh, league one appearances. Um, it's it's Leon are pretty sacked, to be fair. It's it's Paqueta and Bruno, and they've got a lot of good midfielders. So it's that that stopped him from playing because he plays for Leon. So um he still looks great. He's he's very young. He's about to turn well, not as young as he was. He's about to turn twenty four, and yeah, I've also seen that he's available for cheaper. Um, but it depends. Leon aren't going to let Paqueta and Awa. They're not going to let everybody go. They're not going to have any players left. Um, so they've they've got to be careful. Um, didn't they? Uh, did they? Are they the ones that brought in um, Endon Bele on loan to fill the gap for? for Bruno when we took him. I think they did. Yeah, they, mm. they can't lose all their midfielders at Lyon, so it will be one person will depart from that midfield. Probably not not more than that. It would be... Otherwise, they're just going to have no midfield left. Fair enough. Right. Final player for tonight, Alex, and that is Clement Longley. So, we looked at Umtiti in January. Um, and we, we were unsure... He had a. Um, he refused to have meniscus surgery. I don't quite understand why. He, he should probably just get it. Um, and it was a lot of big controversy around that. But his um, left-sided partner, who we didn't really look at, is Longley. Um, they're having a lot of problems, like we discussed earlier, with their wage with their wage structure and getting fresh contracts signed, new players in. That it's it's chaos right now at Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're also rumored to be trying to bring in a couple of centre backs. You know, with there's, there's loads been been rumored from from Chelsea, and there's bits and bobs flying around. Um, so, is this guy available? He's been thrown up several from several sources over the last few days. Um, left sided centre back. We have been aggressively pursuing left sided centre backs, but this guy isn't a project for the future. He is about to turn twenty seven, so he is peak. Um, not played an incredible amount of minutes, but still enough. Um, 800 minutes in the league and he's been used in Europe as well. Yeah. But this is, this is really nice. I like this. <laughs> so he's in the 99th percentile for passes attempted and he completes around 90% of those passes as well. So, Jesus. I mean, to be fair to him, this is a bit deceiving to claim he's only in the top 12%. That the reason he's missing them is because he, he he hits nearly ninety passes a match. Of course, he's going to miss some of them because he's just passing three times more than our centre backs. Um, so ten progressive carries as well. So very much like how Shah does for us, he will occasionally mm-hmm. just trot forward um, into midfield with the ball. Um, this is what obviously what he does. Progressive passes as well is in the ninety ninth percentile at nearly seven seven per ninety. Um, Yes, hundred percent. Yes, if oh, he's available God, yeah. for I've, anything I've reasonable, seen him, I've seen him. Yeah, um, I've watched him a few times. Uh, quite a few times. I think he's absolutely quality. Um, without a shadow of a doubt. Is, the question is then: this completely flips our because it's the club's plan seems to be sign a young left-footed centre back and let yeah. Burn be, you know, have Burn and a younger one. So this would completely destroy that idea, but. I really like it because it's a Barcelona centre back who is one of the best passers of the ball, um, and it would mean we could play the way we want to play quicker. And we could mm. next season be a bit more dominant again. Um, you know, the difference having Longley and Cher next to each other compared to Clark and Lascelles that is, you know, one is close to a European level, if not a European level, and one is you're going to get relegated. Like that would it would be nuts, but it yeah. depends on the price. They're trying to scrap for money. We've seen that with the the price they let Coutinho go for. They are in trouble. Um, there will be departures from Barcelona. It just depends who goes, whether it's Depay or defenders or whether De Jong, uh, Frankie De Jong goes. 
some but few of them have got to go they've got to lose a few because it's just they just don't have the money they've got to restructure it somehow um and fingers well, crossed they we are um from that in I, i've way. just seen in the comments before there as well that, that they have actually um i think it's spotify or somebody massive like that is is taking them sponsoring them um and I think it's a massive sponsorship deal. So, you know, the, but listen, I still feel, I agree with you 100%. I still feel that, um, you know, the Spanish league especially uh, is, is well, it's hemorrhaging money. So they, they need to, they've got to sell players in order to bring more in. You know, it, I think it doesn't it's matter connected whether to their got... wage cap though. I'm not sure the extra money matters. I think it's rules. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um... It, it, They've got to let players go. They have to if yeah. they want to bring more in. Um, so that's why I agree. I, I think it would be uh, it would be stupid for us, you know, not to look at Spain, especially uh, with the way their their system is at the minute. Uh, Jade says uh, this season uh, won't be cute. John Joe, he was injured, uh, then became a bench player due to the other three's form, and that, that's of course his score. Um, and of course, Jimmy says the selling the younger finance signings as well. Uh, the need, obviously, the wage bill at Barcelona is still through the goddamn roof. So they've got to let some players go. Uh, Jim says it's one billion pounds over four years of Spotify. Um, yeah, but that's you know, but what we're saying yeah, is they've got to let players now. go. Yeah, they've got to, they've got to sell to bring in. It's simple as that. Um, well, listen, thank you very much for watching tonight. Uh, over a 1,000 on a Monday night, which is bloody incredible. And you should all uh, pat yourselves on the back and uh, thank you so much. It's uh, incredible uh, to have so many people taking part in the show, getting all your feedback and and, and finding out who you, who you guys look for and things like that. Uh, so if you are new, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you know when we go live or we uh, record a video. Uh, there is plenty more shows coming up this week. They're not out yet. They're not advertised because we just have to check on schedules. Uh, one show that is booked in is Friday night. Um, it's the Loaded Tune Review show again. Uh, we'll be joined by uh, Pete Davey and Chris Hall from uh, from the Loaded Mag NUFC team. By the way, go and get subscribed to them. Uh, we're in collaboration with them, so go and give them a subscribe as well. Brilliant, brilliant channel with the guys over there. Uh, but two of them will be on with us on Friday night. And, of course, we'll be talking about all the latest news and everything like that from Newcastle United. So it's going to be a great show at 8 o'clock on Friday. But we will have some more lives before then. Uh, obviously, the news is picking up at Newcastle United very, very quickly. So uh, what we'll, there could be daytime live shows or recordings, uh, but we will let you know. So do uh, hit the notification and do keep an eye on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc., uh, for when we announce the, the, the shows. Um, but thank you very much to everybody that super chatted tonight. Alex, thanks for your company. And thank you to the mods backstage again for a fantastic work with the chat. And thank you to you guys out there for watching. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, we'll see you very soon. Uh, be kind, guys. Take care. Good night. <laughs>